the, the, the title of the workshop, and I'm going to keep it nice and informal, all right? It's called The Cause is the Cure. I'm going to talk tonight about the five fundamentals of health, the basics of what you need to know to raise a happy, healthy family, and to get yourself out of your current state. If you're in a state of sickness and disease, if you're not happy with where you're at, I'm going to teach you action steps that you can do to get out of that right now. And these action steps, not only are they going to be good for you to do, but they're life, true, tried, tried and true um, protocols that wellness doctors like myself have used for hundreds of years. Okay? Now, I can't tell you how important it is when you're listening to what I have to say tonight to listen not only with an open set of ears, but with an open mind as well. Because some of the things I'm going to tell you tonight... I've got 100% certainty will work for you. I've got the research that will back it up, but some of them are going to be things that you're going to go, oh, I can't believe you said that. What if I told you there were doctors in the United States right now that were curing cancer? What if I told you there are doctors right now that are preventing and curing heart disease? What if I told you that your kids didn't have to be on ADD, ADHD medications, you don't need to dope these kids? What if I told you that? But the thing is, is that nobody's given you the power to learn how to do these things. And I'm going to do that to you, with you tonight. So let me ask you all a question. The question I want to ask you is this. And I, say, I ask this question a lot when I do workshops is, what does it mean to be healthy? If I ask you, if I say you're a healthy person, what does that mean? So somebody give me an answer. If you're healthy, what's it mean to be healthy? No sickness. No sickness. Okay, great answer. What else? Anything else? Pain. No pain. Great answer. What else? Anything? Those are the most common two things. I mean, listen, I've done this. I've asked this question in rooms of thousands of people. And the most two common things I get, not sick, not in pain. I feel good, right? I mean, how many of us want to feel good? We all want to feel good. If you don't want to feel good, there's something wrong with you, okay? We all want to feel good. But can we really truly judge our health on how we feel? And the answer is absolutely not. I mean, how many people do you know that felt great but went to the doctor and left with a diagnosis of heart disease or cancer or diabetes or something? Or how many people do you know that felt great and were quote-unquote in shape and healthy person and whammo dropped dead of a heart attack at 50 on a treadmill? A lot. Now let's talk about cancer for a second. Who's heard of cancer before? It's a new thing, just kind of came out, right? You know, one in, what is it, one in three Americans right now die of cancer. One in two Americans die of heart disease. Does anybody know the number one cause of death in the United States right now? It's not heart disease. That's second cause of death. Number one cause of death, 700,000 Americans die every year from what's called iatrogenic death, which means you're properly taking prescription drugs that you've been told to take, or you get killed in a hospital because uh, doctors are doing too many surgeries, or you have infections, or all this kind of stuff. Come on, guys. We just got started. So what I'm telling you is the number one cause of death is that, but let's talk about cancer. Okay? Cancer is... Nick, you can have a seat right there, buddy. Cancer is a disease of the immune system, okay? So, so now listen to this. How many of y'all know people that have had cancer? We all do, right? One of three Americans have had it some part in their life. The deal is this. Do you know how long it takes for a cancer cell to form before the time that it's actually developed into a symptom of cancer? They say on average about seven years. So if you've had cancer growing in your body for seven years, how many of y'all know people that went to the doctor, they were diagnosed with cancer and got six months to live or six weeks to live or something like that? That's how the story goes, right? Well, that person had that cancer growing in their body for months to years before that, but they didn't know. And you know why they didn't know? Because they didn't have a symptom. And in the world we live in today, we judge our health based off of our symptoms. If we feel good, we're healthy. Well, that's the biggest bunch of crock that's out there. It's functioning good. And when I talk about function, there's three fundamental aspects of health that you all need to understand that, that if you have this functioning proper, and this is really the basis of this workshop tonight, number one is you've got to have good, strong structural alignment. So listen to this. This is super important. Many of you probably drove here in a car tonight, right? If your alignment is not proper in your vehicle, What's going to happen? It's going to cause dysfunction in your car. Your gas mileage is bad. Your oil consumption is bad. Your tires are going to run bad. Something like that's going to go bad, right? True, true. Number two, you have to have good nerve function. And I'm going to get into that in just a minute as well. But the brain and spinal cord control everything in your body. So if you have any symptom, and in a minute I'm going to go over what symptoms are and how they work and what, they, what, the, what the structures and functions are. But any symptom can be traced back almost 100% to the nervous system. Okay? And the last thing that's important is your biochemistry should be right. So when I talk about chemistry, I talk about your nutrition. So what I'm talking about is good stuff in and bad stuff out. How many of y'all know if you get stuff in, 
it's got to come out too. And if it don't, that's a big problem. Okay? So the, that's really the, the basis of this workshop tonight is this. I don't care what symptoms, sickness, disease you have. Because listen, I've seen people have cancer. It's, I've seen it go away. I've seen people who've been diagnosed with things like ALS, MS, um, fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic disease. I've seen it go away. I've seen it go away when the experts say that it can't be cured. So the reason why we're not curing most diseases is because we're treating the disease. And that's what we do in this country is we treat the symptoms of the disease. We don't treat the cause of the problem. So let's get into to something that I want to make sure that you all understand. And this is really important. It's the five fundamentals of, of health. It's the five keystone things that, that your body needs to do, that you need to do. Number one is you need to maximize your positive thoughts. I know this sounds crazy. I'm not going to get too pie in the sky about it. But there's a saying that, when we just repainted this office, so there's no sayings on the wall. They'll be on the wall pretty soon. But there's sayings on this wall. One of them will say something like, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. So if you have stinking thinking, if you think everything's a bummer, everything sucks, life is horrible, life is bad, Murphy's Law is always going to happen to you, guess what? It is. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that you need to have a name it, claim it, grab it, blab it, grab it, that kind of mentality, but you need to have positive thoughts, positive affirmations. We don't, when you come in, a lot of you are patients of mine, I don't ever ask you, hey, tell me how bad your neck pain is today. Tell me how bad your diabetes is. I always say what? Tell me something good today, right? Because I want to change the way you think. Because if you change the way you think, you'll change the way you live. And I can't tell you how much research is out there because there's tons and tons of research and articles that are out there that talks about how positive affirmations, what we see and what we think affects our outlook and our, 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 um, our outcomes in life. So let me tell you a story about somebody real quick. Does anybody know who Joel Osteen is? You ever heard of Joel Osteen? Big TV preacher, evangelical dude, super cool cat, about this tall, right? Super cool guy, always smiling. You know, life is good. He has, so his mother, Dodie Osteen is her name. Dodie was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I think it was stage four pancreatic and it metastasized to her limbs. She was told, sorry, there's nothing that can be done. You're not going to make it. Well, she didn't believe that. She, she got up every day. She actually, what she did was she put a picture of herself in the mirror so every day when she's brushing her hair, she saw a picture of herself when she was in her 30s, when she was young and good looking and healthy and vibrant. And she declared every day, I'm getting healthier. I'm getting younger. Every day I'm looking better like that. And you know what? When those doctors told her she couldn't be alive, that was 10, 15 years ago. We just saw her in St. Louis a couple years back when Joel was in town talking. So she, with, through positive thoughts and positive affirmations, helped change her life. Okay, now we can get deep into that. In fact, there's some, there's some treatments that we do in this office. Many of you have used them before. Um, you know the app we have called the Q Dreams. Okay, um, it's a, an app that you can get for your phone. MindFit or Q Dreams. A good friend of ours invented this product. Uh, his name is Patrick Porter, Dr. Patrick Porter. And you can listen to this. It's self hypnosis, it's self mastery thinking. So we have a weight loss program that we do in the office. And there's a, just to give you an example, there's a weight loss um, lecture series that you listen to. And it says all these subliminal messages when you're sleeping. And I know some people get weirded out by that. Dave, you're probably thinking, you know, it's going to say, go pay Naputi tens of thousands of dollars in your dreams, right? And then you wake up and you go, I don't know why, but I'm writing you a check. <laughs> No. But it says things like, it's funny because it does say things like eat more greens, eat more apples, drink more water. And the thing is, is it works. You know, if you can, the brain is a master computer. If you can get your brain right about anything, if we can start reprogramming your brain, we can fix anything. I guarantee it. I've seen it happen before. So the first thing is you have to have maximized thinking. You got to maximize your brain. And I'll go deeper into that later on. But that's number one. Number two, and this is the most important thing, you have to have a maximized nervous system. And let's talk about this, okay? I want to pull this chart out. Many of you have seen this before. Some of you have not. But let's talk real quick about <clears throat> your brain and your spine. People come to see us from all over the United States for all kinds of weird, crazy symptoms. You know, people come to offices like mine because they have things like chronic pain or fibromyalgia or OCD or ADD or kids with issues or whatever. You name a symptom, we see it. If you got a broken bone or you need surgery, I probably can't help you, but we can help you before and after. 
But one of the reasons why we get so much help with folks is because we understand that the brain and the spinal cord control everything in the body. I cannot tell you how important this is. This is the most important aspect of your life, of your health. It's more important than exercise, more important than diet and nutrition. It's even more important than positive mental attitude. So look at this. <clears throat> the brain lives up here. You all know that? You know you have a brain? Okay. So your brain lives up here. It sends electrical signals down the spinal cord. Okay. Now when you have, when you have, so think about your spinal cord like a, a fuse box. You all know what a fuse box is, right? Okay. So what if you, what if you went home tonight and after this workshop, you're like, man, that guy's a genius. I can't wait to go back and see him and tell all my friends about him. And then you turn the lights on in the kitchen. That was a joke, by the way, and that's as good as they get. <laughs> and you turn your lights on in the kitchen and you turn the switch and nothing happens. Well, if your bulbs are good and your bills are paid, where are you going to go look for the problem? At the fuse box, right? So let's say you go to your fuse box and you look and everything's in alignment except for there's one fuse that's blown over here and you turn it back on and the kitchen lights turn on. Y'all have experienced that before, right? Well, check this out. There are fuses, and those of you that have never seen this before, I want you to get a copy of my book and I'll give you one for free. There's a chart in here that looks just like this, okay? So it shows all the fuses down the left-hand side. It talks about the levels in the spine. And on the, far, on the next level, it talks about the body where you can have pain, so headaches, neck pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, all that. The next level is what those nerves control, what organs. So if you look here, there's things like the diaphragm. Who's heard of the thyroid? You've heard of the thyroid dysfunction before? Huge problem in this world. Huge problem. You know why most people's thyroid doesn't ever get turned on? Because the nerve that controls the thyroid doesn't function. You can take all the darn thyroid pills in the world, but if the nerve that controls it doesn't work, it's not going to function. That's why we see people and they start to get adjusted and they go, man, I don't know why, but my energy is off the charts because your thyroid's working again. I don't know why, but I've lost 20 pounds without even doing anything because your thyroid's working. It's just that simple. It's turning that fuse on. There are fuses in here, like at C1 and C2, that can cause dizziness, spaciness, low energy, memory issues, brain fog, ADD, ADHD, ears, eyes, nose, throat, sinuses, food allergies, sensitivities. All kinds of stuff can be caused because the nerves aren't working. So what happens in the world that we live in? Let's say you wake up one day and you've got, who's heard of indigestion before? Acid reflex. Anybody ever heard of that? Let's say, let's talk about that for a minute. What if you woke up, what if it's two in the morning and you're eating a hot dog, watching TV, because that's usually what people do at two in the morning if they're watching TV, they're eating a hot dog yeah. and ice cream. You're right. Yeah. Right? That just happened to you, huh? And guess what? Guess what commercials are on at two in the morning when people are eating hot dogs, watching TV? Two things. Number one, commercials about insomnia, right? And number two, commercials about what? Indigestion. If you have these symptoms, gas, bloating, burping, belching, all this stuff, you need to talk to your doctor about the what? The purple pill, right? Who's heard of the purple pill before? So, you, you know, you're sitting there eating your hot dog and all this other stuff, and you go, man, that's totally me. I need that purple pill. I can't wait till tomorrow to call my doctor to get that purple pill. So what we do is we're treating that symptom with a drug. You guys tracking me on that? So let me show you something real quick. Um, you guys are in luck. I am a... Phenomenal artist. So, <clears throat> let me show you how the body works real quick. This is super important. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may have not. Now look at this. This, sorry for you over there. This is your brain. Everybody see that? Pretty good drawing of the brain, right? This is the brain. Okay, Kim, that's your brain. All right. This is, so the way the body works is the brain sends signals down the spinal cord out to the body, right? So pretend this is the spinal cord. So we've got this, this signal going down here. Down here's your body, by the way. That's what my body looks like. Nice and round. There's a, the brain sends signals down the spinal cord to your body. Anywhere in your body. To your organs, to your back, to your neck, to your knees, your bowels, you name it. And then signals go from your body back up to your brain saying, okay, I perceived that signal, I digested food, whatever. So let's talk about the stomach for a minute. And by the way, this is 100% healthy, life is good. Let's talk about the stomach. Let's say, and by the way, if you look right here, it says T5 and T6 controls the stomach. All right, and also C4 controls the stomach. Let's say that you have, the, you just had your hot dog. You just ate your hot dog. Okay, now the brain is sending signals down to the stomach saying, hey stomach, digest that hot dog, 
process it as food, absorb it, eat it, and poop it out. That's what it tells it to do. That's what the brain's job is, okay? And the stomach says, okay, I'll do that, and it sends signals back up to the brain, and life is good. But let's say this happens. Let's say the brain has, there's a disconnect in the brain's ability to send a signal from the brain to the body, okay? So let's say that we're trying to make a phone call. I'm trying to call you, Dave, and uh, we're on our cell phones. Come on in, Anita, and have a seat. We're on our cell phones, and I'm sending a, I'm calling you, and we go through a bad, a bad area of, uh, she ducked right under that camera, that's pretty good. <laughs> Let's say we go through a bad signal. So the brain, so now I'm trying to talk to you, and you, and normally I'm saying, hey, hey Dave, I need you to do this, and all you hear is <laughs> static, white noise. So when you have a subluxation or a blown fuse in your spine, what happens is the brain sends signals down to the stomach and now it can't get a total signal to the stomach. Let's say it only gets a signal of about 60%. So now instead of the stomach hearing from the brain saying, hey, I need you to digest this food, make it work and absorb it, all it hears is, hey stomach, I need you to... It goes, what does that mean? So what's going to happen is the stomach sends off these signals, warning, warning, there's a problem. It's going to give you symptoms. Now you have a symptom of, of like heartburn or indigestion. Okay, are you guys tracking me on this? And I'll explain how this applies to every aspect of your life in a minute, but we're talking about the stomach. So now you've got the symptoms. SX stands for symptoms. Okay, so now you have a symptom of heartburn, indigestion, gas bloating, whatever. What are you going to do? What do you do when you have heartburn? What do you do? Tums, purple pill, antacids, whatever. You're going to now take a drug, a DX, right? Okay, has anybody ever seen a drug commercial on television? You ever see at the end of it, you know, the one that I love the best is the Lunesta. You ever seen the Lunesta commercial? It's the one with the butterfly. It's a creepy video, man, um, because there's, you know, you're sleeping. There's these really healthy looking, peaceful people sleeping. By the way, people who have issues don't look like that. You know, they're not healthy looking. Um, and this lady's tossing and turning and the Lunesta butterfly um, flies in the window, kisses her on her forehead and she passes out. And there's this beautiful music playing and all this stuff. And then at the end, the very last bit of it, the music turns up real high and there's a little bitty voice that goes, that says the side effects. And it says, may cause explosive diarrhea. Your bowels are going to fall out of your pants. You're going to have erectile dysfunction. Your eyes are going to pop out all this other kind of stuff, but you know what, man, you're going to sleep like a baby. You know what I mean? So every drug has what? Every drug has side effects. And on average, it has three. Every drug has three side effects. So check me out on this. So now every drug has another side effect. So if I draw this, look, I'm drawing, you have a symptom, you take a drug, now you got three more symptoms. Well, now when you're taking your Tums, let's talk about, let's talk about Prilosec or uh, protein pump inhibitors. Let me tell you the three main side effects of those. Number one, women, you should listen up. It stops your absorption of calcium. So guess what happens? You get osteoporosis and osteopenia because you're taking Prilosec. So now you get to take Boniva, which makes what's called Kmart bone, which is not real bone, by the way. It's fake bone. And it doesn't reduce the risk of fractures, okay? It's a big lie. I'll do a workshop on that sometime soon for you. The second side effect is it causes pain. It causes calcium and magnesium channels to shut off. Calcium and magnesium is needed for your muscles to contract and move, so you get pain. Now you, you, your bones hurt and your body aches all over the place. And the last side effect, guess what else it does? It doesn't allow your body to absorb fluids, so now you're dehydrated. Now you got all kinds of other symptoms. So the average American that's on nine or ten pills is because they've got one original symptom that they're taking them for. So in our infinite wisdom, what I say is, I don't like living over here. I like to say, well, what's the cause of the problem? See, that's a weird thing. When I tell folks, when people come to see us, see, you know, I'm a doctor. And people come to see us and like, well, I've tried chiropractic. I've tried medicine. Well, has anybody ever found out what the cause of your problem is? Well, no. Well, what the hell are people treating you for then? I mean, like, that's the most commonsensical thing we need to do. Find the cause of the problem and fix it. You see? So what we do is we find the cause. And one of the biggest causes that you have with folks is people have these blown fuses that are called subluxations. You see, that's the biggest thing, you know? And, and here's the deal. You, there's a, a test that we do that measures the nerve function. 
Okay, and the nerves, you know, it's a, it's a thermography uh, EMG test. It measures electrical outlet and, and heat, and it shows us where there's bad blown fuses. And the cool thing is, here's what's cool about subluxations. It's kind of like being pregnant. You either are or you aren't. It's not a little bit, you know? So it tells us how bad it is, but it either is or it isn't. So even though you, let's just say this, maybe you don't have a symptom like, let's say your, your top fuse is blown in your, your cervical spine. And you don't have a symptom of headaches. Well, you go, I don't get headaches. Well, not yet you don't. Or I don't have immune system issues. Well, not yet you don't. It's a crystal ball. This controls everything. So if you want to talk about, if you want to talk about how to prevent cancer, if you want to talk about how to, how to prevent heart disease, how to prevent sickness, you got to have a proper functioning immune system. Because if the immune system controls digestion, absorption, assimilation of all your vitamins, and tells your immune system to work, if that doesn't work, nothing else will. Does that make sense? That's kind of the foundation, fundamental stuff of, of what we do in this workshop. And there's a book that I would encourage you to get. There's two of them. One of them is mine. I'll give you one of those tonight. Um, the other one is by a Dr. Charles Major. Some of you may have heard me talk about him on my radio program before. Um, we're getting ready to pin him down so we can interview him on the show. Dr. Charles Majors wrote a book, The Cause is the Cure. And uh, in the Cause is the Cure book, uh, let me just give you a quick kind of summary of, of Dr. Charles. Um, 32 years old, I think is when it happened, um, started getting migraine headaches. And this guy is a ultra fit dude. I mean, like he's just ripped up men's health to the 90th power. I hate him, you know. Mm -hmm. He just tan skin, beautiful hair. Hate him even more, okay? But the deal is this. Um, and he lives in Chicago. Um, not going to go there. But anyway... Um, the guy started getting these migraine headaches, and he's, a, he's an Ironman triathlete. You know, I mean, this guy is just in shape, the epitome of health. He's a chiropractor. He gets adjusted all the time, does all this stuff. He starts getting these migraines, so he can't go away. He gets all this treatment. Nothing helps. Nothing helps. Finally goes and gets an MRI or a CAT scan of his brain. He's got stage four or three. Three or four, I don't know, brain cancer, brain tumor. Whether it's one or four, who cares? It's terminal. They said, listen, get your affairs in order. You ain't going to be here in six weeks. Wow. 32 years old, father of three, epitome of health, goes out and teaches health to people like I'm doing, shook his foundation. So he had similar challenges like I've had in my life with other health issues with my family and whatnot. He says, what am I going to do? If I get cancer, what am I going to do? Medicine says there's nothing that, you, that I can do for you. You're toast. That's it. You're done. So he, his book and his documentary that he's doing is his journey that he's done. And now he's cancer free, I think, five years. And he was, going, he was told he's going to be toast. And let me tell you a little bit about what he did. Okay. Cancer is an immune system problem. Here's my disclaimer, so you all hear this right now. And I'm recording this. I don't treat cancer. I treat people who have cancer all the time, but I don't treat cancer. Cancer in the United States legally can only be treated with chemotherapy and radiation. That's all I can say. But I've seen cancer disappear a lot. I've seen cases like Dr. Charles's cancer go away because here's what cancer is. Cancer is and always will be an immune system problem. So if so think about this. Does anybody know? Let's talk about this for a minute. One more time. <clears throat> Who in here knows someone that's ever had cancer before? Okay? So if the immune system's bad, if the nervous system's bad, the immune system's bad. You guys understand that since I've explained this? Okay. So <clears throat> in normal healthy life, what happens is our body is constantly making new cells. The quality of your health is in direct proportion to the health of your cells and your DNA. Y'all know, you've heard DNA before, right? You heard of DNA. You know that our DNA can change. Do you know that? There's a, there's a newer study of genetics called epigenetics. It's been around for five or six years. When we were kids, it, we were told, once you have your genes, that's what you got. What your mama had, you got. What daddy had, you got. We know that's completely untrue. And your genes can change due to the quality of your life and your health. Okay? So check this out. <clears throat> Do you know that our body's made up of trillions and trillions of cells, right? And a normal cell, let's say it looks like this. It's like a donut, okay? Circles, okay? Normal happy cells look like this. Let's say we have a stress. Anybody in here ever heard of stress before? But when I talk about stress, I talk about it from a physical stress, subluxation, right? Like a fall, 
Anybody in here ever have kids before? Anybody in here ever, you know, physical stress. Okay, everybody's got it. Gravity is the number one stress. It sucks, right? That's a joke too, it doesn't, man. So when we have stress, physical, chemical, or emotional stress, it causes our body to make abnormal cells. So now we start getting cells that are not normal. They're kind of weird looking. They're oblong. You see how that's different than those right there? And what happens is this. And by the way, that happens a lot when we're subluxated, when the nervous system can't communicate with the stomach, the liver, the cancer, the, or the, uh, the, the bowels, the bladder. It makes abnormal cells. What the body does to protect that is this. So let's say there's abnormal cells right here. Body's smart. God don't make junk. Okay? So it does this. It sends all these cells to surround this. Look at this. It's surrounding these bad cells. And what it does is in, these are white blood cells. Those are our fighter cells. The more white blood cells we have that work, the healthier we are. Okay, and getting your nervous system work proper can actually boost your immune system uh, and your white blood cells by 600% a lot of times. That's huge. Okay, um, so these white blood cells spit an enzyme called protease. Protease is an enzyme that lives in white blood cells. It spits it on cancer, it spits it on bacteria, and it kills it. So you know that product that we give a lot of you guys called trauma when you have pain or you're sick or whatever? It just knocks your sickness out fast. That's why. Does anybody know what it's called in your body when your cells clump up and t just do this big like clump in your body? Capsulate. Yeah, but what do you call that? Blood clot. Yeah, you're close. What do you call a capsule of cells that typically happens with cancer? A tumor. Heard of a tumor before? The latest research on cancer says tumors are an immune system protective mechanism. It says that the body's trying to wall off cancer. It's trying to stop the spread of this abnormal growth of cancerous cells. It's trying to kill it. Now what happens, who's heard of people that have had spontaneous remissions of cancer before? Do you know what that is? When the body wins, that's when. That's, that's when we get spontaneous remission of cancer. So if stress is greater than our health, we lose. If our health is greater than our stress, we win. Does that make sense? That's as simple as I can make it. So what we need to do, because just so you know, and I don't want to scare anybody, but <laughs> there's cancer in all of our bodies right now. My little girl that's out there, I've got it. My wife, where It's all over, all the time. All cancer is, is abnormal cells either in the right place or abnormal cells in the wrong place. And our body is supposed to go around and kill that stuff. But if it doesn't have the smarts to understand how to do that, our neuroimmune system, so our brain tells our nervous system to kill that stuff off, it doesn't work. You guys tracking me on that? So check this out. Who in here knows people that have had cancer before and they got it cured from, or they got it in remission from you know, radiation or chemo and guess what happens? It comes back. Why does it come back? Because the root cause of the cancer was never addressed. Do you see what I'm saying? So the system works. So the nervous system controls everything. So that's where cancer comes from. Dr. Uh, Majors beat cancer because he already had good positive attitude, but he started getting crazy with proper, proper corrective adjustments, getting the curve in his spine treated and all that kind of stuff. So that's the nervous system aspect. The third thing is he maximized his nutrition. So let's talk a little bit about that, okay? Now, Katie and Abby are phenomenal resources to get information about the nutrition and stuff that we do. I do clinical nutrition, which means, okay, you have this condition because you're low with magnesium. We'll give you magnesium, it's gonna fix it. You know, you need vitamin C because you're sick. I'm good at that stuff. I'm great at that stuff. I'm horrible at saying, here's how you make healthy pasta. You don't get this physique by making healthy pasta, okay? Um, I'm, a, I'm just going to leave it there because my wife's in the room. Um, <laughs> love you so much, baby. So anyway, um, our only vice in life is we like to eat healthy and lots of it, okay? But here's the deal. Let's talk about supplementation and maximizing your nutrition because here's the deal. If you're like me and you like to eat and you eat foods that you want to eat, you can do that. But you have to supplement your diet to make sure that your stress levels are down. So the most important thing, the most important thing that you can talk about when it comes to nutrition to boost your immune system, reduce your risk of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and stroke is to control what's called oxidative stress. Okay? Who in here has heard of antioxidants before? Okay? So think about this. 
your body, so oxidative stress is like rusting. It's like a car rusting. We don't want our body to rust and get old and all that kind of stuff. The more oxidative stress we have in our system, the more rust we get, all right? So think about it. In our body, there's all this stuff called free radicals. And I always tell folks free radicals are like... Um, they're like little bolts of lightning or little missiles floating through our system. So there's no way you can ever get rid of... Jenga. There's no way you can ever get rid of all the oxidative stress in your body, ever. Okay? Um, but what we can do is we can minimize it. And the least amount, of, less amount of stress we have, the better. So check this out. So normally, we have these cells in our body that look like this, okay? Nice, happy, healthy cells. All these little squiggly lines in here, these are oxidative stresses, free radicals, okay? So what happens is when these free radicals hit our cells, they do one of two things. They either turn it into Swiss cheese, so think about like a bullet going through a cell. And when the bullet goes through the cell, all the good stuff leaks out. Remember I said the quality of our health and our immune system is direct proportion to the quality of our cells, Okay, so all the good stuff leaks out and the bad stuff uh, stays in. There's no, that's, that's a sick cell. And the other thing that happens is there's something called uh, sclerosis. Ever heard of sclerosis, arterial sclerosis, atherosclerosis? It means the outside layer of the cell gets hard and thick. And things can't come in and things can't go out. And our cells are just like our body. Good has to come in and bad has to come out. If it doesn't do that, we get sick. So this causes cancer, sickness, disease, you name it. So what we need to do is, and I always explained it like this. Anybody here remember the 80s? I know a lot of people are trying to forget it. But do you remember the 80s? And gosh dang it, it escapes my, my mind. Um, but th when Reagan was president, we were so scared about the Russians shooting missiles at us, we developed this like force field thing. Does anybody remember the name of it? Star Wars. Star Wars. That's exactly what it was. And it was basically like a... Star Wars grid that if there was missiles coming over, we'd have a missile that'd blow it up before it hit the ground and kill us. Some of you may not have known that. There's your trivia for the night. If you're ever on Jeopardy, you're welcome. So we need to have a good Star Wars in our body. So we need to have things that block these, anti these, anti or these um, oxidative stresses, these free radicals. And real simple, vitamin A, D, E, and K, the fat-soluble ones, are phenomenal for this. The most important is D. Now many of you hear me talk about this on the radio program all the time. Vitamin D is so important I cannot tell you how important it is. Vitamin D3 in your body is a pro-hormone, not only a vitamin, but every cell in your body needs it to function properly. And vitamin D literally blocks these, um, these free radicals from hitting our cells and helps these cells multiply and get stronger. So vitamin D is essential, but here's the thing, and people know that vitamin D is important, but here's the problem, most people don't take near enough vitamin D. Anybody in here taking vitamin D right now? Do you know what a good healthy dose of vitamin D is? Most people freak out when I tell them, because they talk to their doctor, because they go to their medical doctor who has zero training in nutrition, and the, they say, oh, you're taking a fat soluble vitamin over a thousand units, you're gonna die. You're crazy, you're gonna die because you're not taking enough. And that's the fact, by the way, Average lifespan of a medical doctor, 58 years old, okay? Just FYI, great person to take lifetime advice from, okay? I'm not against medicine. I have medical doctors that work for me, but if we're gonna talk about fixing stuff and longevity, that ain't where we're gonna go. If I get hit by a truck, take me there, not here. But after my body gets you know, out of intensive care, bring me back here. So vitamin D3, the average person needs around 8,000 to 10,000 I use a day of that stuff. Here's why, especially this time of the year. You want to know the formula to, to fight the flu? You want to know the formula to not get sick? 8,000 to 10,000 units of vitamin D3 a day. Get some, you're not going to get any sunlight this time of the year. There isn't any, okay? Um, you need to drink lots of water and stay away from sugary foods. You do that combination, the chance of you getting the flu are next to nothing. And a matter of fact, there's a study that's been out that shows that vitamin D3 has an 8 to 10 times higher chance, you taking this 8 to 10 times chance higher of you not to get the flu than you getting the flu shot. Why don't you just take vitamin D? I, I've got folks that have anxiety, depression, insomnia, chronic pain, um, all kinds of issues. They start getting high doses of vitamin D3. Guess what happens? It's gone. It's a miracle. No, it's not. It's common sense. 
You know, eight to 10,000 units of vitamin D3. That's important. Here's another one. If you want to knock down, if you want to knock down those oxidative stresses, vitamin C is so important. I can't even tell you how important it is. There was a guy by the name of Linus Pauling. You ever heard of Linus Pauling? Linus Pauling won the Nobel Peace Prize back in like the 40s because he found that vitamin C could cure almost anything. In fact, back in the day, they were treating cancer, heart disease, diabetes, stroke, all these things with vitamin C and killing it and winning. Um, Boy, that really made Merck and uh, Big Pharma mad. So they called Linus Pauling a quack and about got him thrown in jail. Um, but anyway, high dose vitamin, and I'm talking high dose. So here's the thing: if you want to get, if you want to not get sick and you want to boost your immune system, vitamin D3 orally, eight to ten thousand units a day is phenomenal. Vitamin C is huge. But here's the deal: most people can't get enough vitamin C in their body because if you get too much vitamin C, then we know what the side effect is. Some of you must have had too much vitamin C. So here's the deal. Good, good way to dose vitamin C is this, is you take two to three grams a day, and if you can handle two to three grams a day for about a week, try to kick it up a gram, okay? So let's say you went from three to four. Go to, if you can do four grams a day for a week, and you're still good, no loose stool, next week try more. Okay, usually most folks can get to six to seven and that's about it. Um, any more than that and we'll be treating other problems and we don't need that. But what we can do is we can actually do something and get some mega doses of vitamin C in your body. You know why vitamin C gives you diarrhea? Because it goes through your large and small intestine and flushes everything out. Now this is scary to a lot of people. This is a, this is a syringe. There's a needle on the end of this thing. Okay, um, Susie's about to run out of here. No, she's had these before. But what's in this? This is called a Myers cocktail. Okay, this has been around. This is invented by a Dr. Meyer, who's a medical doctor. I think it was the early, the late 30s or early 40s. Okay, and what's in here, depending upon the formula, there's anywhere between 30 and 60 grams grams of vitamin C, B vitamins amino acids, other things, okay? We can take 60 grams of vitamin C, and many of you in this room have experienced this before. If you've been sick or you have a flu or a cold, you get one of these bad boys next day, you're up and rocking, and everybody else at work is still sick. We do these for preventative reasons, okay? But we also do them to treat stuff. So we can actually bypass your gut and put vitamin C right into your vein, which is totally safe, totally healthy, and it's as organic and natural as you're going to get putting vitamins in your vein. I basically look at this and say that's a whole bunch of squished up oranges going into my body. That's essentially what it is. And it works unbelievable. So I'm a big proponent of, of mega dosing of vitamin B, uh, vitamin C, um, and vitamin D. Now, let's talk about uh, how we doing on time. Am I okay? We good? Okay, good, good. So I've been going about a half hour. So... Um, also, here's another thing that I want to talk about. And again, Katie and Abby do a lot of this stuff in the office and they can teach you more about it. They just did a workshop on it about juicing. Anybody in here juice before? Okay. Has anybody ever heard of a guy by the name of Jack LaLanne? You ever heard of Jack? You know, here's the thing about Jack. Jack was talking on television when it was black and white, okay, um, talking about exercise and nutrition when nobody was talking about it. Jack used to do the calisthenics, all that stuff. Did you know on his 88th birthday, Jack Lane could do 88 push-ups on his Hollywood Walk of Fame? Did you know that? His 88th birthday. He just died a year or two ago, I think. He was 90 plus, 92 years old. Did you know Jack Lane was a doctor? Did you know that? Look this up. Do you know what kind of doctor he was? He was a doctor of chiropractic. He went to Palmer College of Chiropractic, Jack Lane. So a lot of people don't know that. But what was Jack's big thing late in life? You know, remember he'd be on TV talking about the juice, the essence of the juice, you know, all that kind of, and it's, he's right. There is a, there's a list, there's a, if you want to reduce your oxidative stresses, increase your chance for uh, health, longevity, and reduce flus and, and sickness and colds, there's a couple things that you should juice, okay? And this is a phenomenal blend. If you'll do this juice formula, it is amazing. It's called the Gershon formula. There's a, a, a doctor by the name of Max Gershon who used to treat cancer, which remember, it's an immune system issue. He used to treat cancer with this formula, and in the 30s and 40s, kick the heck out of cancer. He still, he still has clinics. They're now in Mexico, unfortunately, because it's illegal to do this in the United States. But you can look it up online, the Gershon Institute, and he would use apples, so red or green apples, celery, he would use um, cucumber, and he would use, sometimes they could put papaya in there as well, but it was basically apples, um, celery, and cucumbers, and carrots. 
carrots. Carrots are my favorite to juice. People a lot of times go, well, what about you know the, the, the sugars in the carrots and the apples? You're, you're fine with that stuff. You really are, okay? And I'm telling you, if you have a shot of that every day, remember we used to juice that stuff all the time? Oh, my gosh. My lips would be like <laughs> orange for weeks. But I feel like, ugh, he-man, you know? Um, the only problem I have with a juicer, it's cleaning it. I don't like it. I need like an indentured servant to clean my juicer, but it's, you know, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. So what I would do is I would make a big picture of it and we would just throughout the week drink out of that thing. But that is a phenomenal way to get those, those vitamins, those fruits, vitamins, and vegetables in you. So there's a lot more we could talk about nutrition. I would really encourage you guys to come to some of these workshops that Abby and, and Vicky, uh, Abby and, and um, Katie do. Uh, but, but that's that part. Then the other thing is the last part, the, well, the last maximizing thing, this is number four, is we need to maximize our oxygen in our body. If you want to reduce sickness, reduce the chance of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, we need to maximize oxygen. Does anybody know how we can do that? It's a four-letter word called exercise, yeah. And here's the thing. You don't have to go to the gym and kill yourself. You don't have to do that. Matter of fact, it's actually, uh, if you're not exercising properly, it's causing way more harm than good to your body. We need to do what's called aerobic and not anaerobic exercises. Aerobic means you get your heart rate going, you're breathing. But listen to this. I'll show you an exercise. If you'll do it, it takes about 10 minutes, maybe five to start. If you'll sit up against the wall, pretend I'm up against the wall, and I'm squatting against the wall, I'm putting my weight against the wall, and if you have bad knees or a bad back and it hurts to do this, then sit on a plyo ball or something, okay? Put your hands out in front of you like this, and if you'll just do deep diaphragmatic breathing to oxygenate your cells. So you know what diaphragmatic breathing is? Anybody ever been taught how to sing or how to uh, play an uh, instrument? We're supposed to breathe from our diaphragm, not from our chest. Most men and women, when you watch people breathe, they breathe like this. Watch my shoulders. Now I'm exaggerating. <laughs> Women are worse than men, but really men are pretty bad too because guys, what are we doing all day? We're sucking our gut in, sticking our chest out, right? Women are, it's just in your nature because you have a chest, usually, okay? And that's hard. And what happens is you start breathing, we start breathing with our neck muscles. And what happens when you breathe with your neck muscles? You get numbness, tingling in your hands and fingers. Your thyroid gets jacked up. You get headaches and, and fatigue all the time. Sometimes you get ringing in the ears, ears, eyes, nose, and throat stuff. And you get tired all the time. You know why you're tired? Because you're not getting oxygen to your cells and to your brain. So if you'll do a breathing exercise where you breathe from your diaphragm, and it's almost impossible to do it when you're seated. So you really should do it when you're laying down on your back or when you're standing. And here's, this is why the good Lord has blessed me with a belly so I can demonstrate this exercise for you. So watch me. When I breathe, so put a hand on your chest and a hand on your tummy. When you breathe in, you shouldn't go like this. You should breathe like that.